a week before I was due to deliver that speech tonight, they said, you've got cancer. They said, if you don't get any treatment within the next three weeks, you're going to die. And then they told me that I wouldn't be here tonight to deliver that speech. But luckily, that speech isn't about what's to come. It's about what an amazing year it's been. And you didn't really expect me to write a whole other speech from my hospital bed, did you? So it started like this. If I've seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. Bernard of Chartres compared us to dwarves perched on the shoulders of giants. He pointed out that we see more and further than our predecessors, not because we have keener vision, nor greater height, but because we are lifted up and born upon their gigantic stature and knowledge. My middle name is Ross. I was given it not long before I was born because my great uncle Ross, he drowned in Sri Lanka. Mr. Ross Bailey was a Christchurch-based kidney transplant surgeon. He was known for making a serious difference to an extraordinary number of people's lives back when organ transplants were an amazing feat. And all humility aside, he was the best in the world at it. He came from a working class background, the only one of his siblings to go to university. And he went on to save numerous lives because he could. Because he sought higher things. He dared to make a difference. Now we can't all save lives by transplanting organs, but we can make a difference in our own way. I want to share with you all some words which I hold particularly close to my heart. Words which meant a lot more to me this year than ever could before. It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who is actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who is and comes short again and again, because there is not effort without error and shortcoming but who does actually strive to do the deed, who knows the great enthusiasm, the great devotion, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who, at the best, knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who, at the worst, if he fails, at least he fails while daring greatly. So this place shall never be with those cold and timid souls that know neither victory nor defeat. But we can't be the best at everything, or even times, at anything. What we can choose to have is moral strength. I wrote about this before I knew I had cancer, and now I have a whole new spin on it. Moral strength is about making a conscious decision to be a person who doesn't give up, when it would be easy to. To be lesser because the journey is less arduous. Jim Rohn said, let others leave small lives, but not you. Let others argue over small things, but not you. Let others cry for small hurts, but not you. Let others leave their future in someone else's hands, but not you. Of course, doing this will mean at some point you'll have to face your fear of falling short. A fear of looking like a fool. A fear of not being enough. And being so you monitor meant facing these fears every day. But here's the thing. None of us get out of life alive. So be gallant, be great, be gracious, and be grateful for the opportunities that you have. The opportunity to learn from the men who have walked before you and those who walk beside you. My challenge to each of you and myself is to continue to grow and to develop for the better. The future is truly in our hands. Forget about long-term dreams. Let's be passionately dedicated to the pursuit of short-term goals. Micro-ambitious. Work with passion and pride on what is in front of us. We don't know where we might end up, or when it might end up. I don't know where it goes from here for any of us. For me, for you, wherever we go and whatever we do, may we always be friends when we meet again. Alfred Pitto.